Hello and welcome to coverage of Formula PlayStation and F1 2013 League run on the PS3 platform. Today we're here with Season 2 Round 3 at the Japanese Grand Prix. It's the Suzuka circuit, we've got 27 laps around here as it's 50% distance on the F1 2013 game. It's an 18 turn circuit, very tricky one, but one that many drivers enjoy. The S's section in Sector 1 is very hot to overtake, so qualifying should be crucial around here. We've got a track length of 5.807 kilometers and a race length of 156.789 kilometers. The tyre options available are the medium tyres, the hard, the intermediate and the wet tyres. We've got forecasts for a heavy, heavy rain qualifying session and then a dry to intermediate condition race. So it should be very interesting indeed here for round three of Formula PlayStation. It's all to play for, it's a long season, but this should be crucial and it should be a brilliant race. On to the qualifying. Alright, so here we are for a qualifying comparison of the Formula PlayStation round number three here in Japan. Today we've got a qualifying comparison between Cal HD1 and Arava. So these guys are massive uh, rivals out on track. Will that extend to this qualifying comparison? I think so. Now coming up to turn one, you just want to throw the car into these first two apexes here. Looks like Cal has overshot turn two a little bit, having to go into first gear just to get through the first, uh, the first couple of corners. And that's cost him a lot of time compared to Arav. Now coming through this uh, middle sector, or this uh, S section here, it's really tests your uh, aerodynamic grip and it's really tricky to negotiate in wet conditions. So uh, both drivers managed to negotiate the first sector fairly well and we'll see how they stack up against each other as we come up to this first sector split here on the freeze frame and it looks like Cal HD is just in front at this stage but it's very close to call. So now we're going to come through the, uh, the Degnas here and it looks like Arab has taken a little bit more curbing compared to Cal HD there who takes a much cleaner line through there. But now coming up to this hairpin here, just make sure you don't lock up. Try and miss the apex a little bit here and get a nice clean exit. Looks like Cal has actually run a little bit too wide there, but as long as his exit is fine, he should be okay. Now coming out of the exit of that corner, Arab used up about a third of his curves. So that's uh, gonna give him some initial time over Cal. But Cal's saving a little bit of curves for later on in the lap and that's gonna help him, I think, as we come through the spoon curve. Now both drivers opting for fourth gear, now shifting down to second gear for the second part of that. And uh, both drivers are negotiating spoon curve fairly well. And I think uh, Arab has used up the rest of his curves compared to Cal, who's got a little bit of curves left uh, remaining. And on the freeze frame there, Cal is uh, just behind Arab there. So he's got a little bit of time to make up in this final uh, sector here. So this uh, final couple of corners is all about bravery. Who's going to take this, uh, this final corner uh, under brakes the latest? It looks like... Uh, Cal has taken a little bit more curbing there and his exit out of this corner has just been a little bit smoother than Arab And I think Cal in the end might just get in front of Arab there and he does he sets 139.886 Compared to Arab who sets 139.897. So that's been the qualifying comparison for Japan I'll now hand over to our main commentator Arab Thank you, Ben, for that brilliant qualifying comparison. So here's how the full grid shapes up. We've got Michos on pole in his Force India Mercedes with a 138.868, which is a brilliant time in the wet. As Cal HD1 is a full second behind in second place, as we just saw Arava in third, a close third, actually. And in fourth place, Nat 9958 in fourth place. Liam Adela does a brilliant job to get himself into fifth place. Hyperdix down in sixth place from his second place in round two, so disappointing for him. Carter Joyce in seventh place. Boss 1996 in eighth. Dragon Doing a good job in 9th place. Mark my weather in 10th. Owen 128 in 11th. Tom97 Fine Strats surprisingly in 12th place, not setting a time. We don't know the full reasons for that, but that lines up the grid. Lil Paul 78, Neo Blitz, Snoop Markey, and Neek FR12 did not start the race. They couldn't turn up, but it should be a very interesting race. We've got dry conditions to start off with and forecast for intermediates later on in the race, so it should be very interesting indeed. Mini Chairs on pole, obviously, he disconnected from the last race, which was very disappointing for him, so he'll be wanting to try and secure a win perhaps in round three. And Tom97 Funstrap will be wanting to fight from the back. So, let's get on to the race. It's race time. We've got round three of Fallen PlayStation here at the Japanese Grand Prix. The tyre options available are the mediums, hards, intermediates and wets as you can see there. And we've got Minichas on pole and he'll be wanting to secure a win, a second win for this season in fact. Arava in third place, very happy he was in qualifying with Kai HD1 in second place. It's going to be all very close indeed. We've got the likes of Hyperdix and Tom maybe battling their way up the grid. So, 
Here we're going to five red lights, building up the revs, build up in the car as we go to five red lights, and we're off, and Cal gets an okay start, Michez gets an okay start, Arava's getting a brilliant start, using a, a half his curse nearly to try and catch up on Cal, his engine's getting hot, he changes down to mix two, going to turn one, it's going to be very crucial into turn two, it's a very tight and twisty section, the S's, very easy to make a mistake in the opening laps with heavy fuel, and as they go through the S's, breaking slightly with the heavy fuel, Nat's coming on the inside, he's pushed Arava off, Nat, and I think that was hyper extended there, pushing Arava off. It was very, very tight there through the S's. Nothing really could be done in terms of getting out of the way. And Arava pushed into the gravel. Tom now up into eighth place after a few people going wide. And Car Joyce has gone horribly wide. And Tom's going to overtake him. And Car Joyce coming back on track, still not getting the good traction as he's been in the gravel. And Arava goes past into eighth place. So Arava is going to have to try and make up his places back. He did qualify in third place, so it does seem like he has the pace. So now we're going to be looking at a replay of this start from Boss 996's view. He's in 8th place, Cart Joyce to the left of him in 7th. So Boss uh, elects to put the brakes into front so he uh, doesn't get any lockups into the rear. So perhaps he was getting some problems there in qualifying with that. So you see Hyperdix is uh, getting an okay start. He goes down the inside of Liam at Thurso. And there's actually been contact there. But it looks like there was uh, Liam at Thurso ghosting. And we checked with Liam at Thurso afterwards. And uh, he feel, felt it was uh, maybe his fault, but also a bit of lag. But as I've been talking as well, Boss was hit off by Dragon Sniper. Dragon Sniper lagging quite a lot. And actually, I can tell you, after this race, he was uh, forced to sort of leave the league, really. There was just too much lag. We asked him to leave the league. There was just far too much lag. He was basically having a completely different race to everyone else. It was like he was on a different racetrack to everyone. And it was really causing accidents like you just saw there with Boss. And Dragon Sniper was uh, none to the wiser because he didn't know he was causing them. So, uh, unfortunately, he's had to leave the league. But he will be replaced by ESC Racing, who will be joining Nat in the Mercedes for the next round. So now onto the action. Hyperdix has just taken Kalish D1 down to the head been on lap one and now going on to the back straight with Arava he's in eighth place he's going to get a beautiful slipstream on Mark Weber in the Marusha and then going on to the front Mini Chair has gone wide there through 130R Arava is going to try and make a move through 130R onto Mark Weber the Marusha and it looks like Mark, Mark Weber's lost the braking zone he's gone horribly wide he's pushed Arava off the track Arava gets into seventh place keeps seventh place because Mark Webber, Mark, Mark Webber was not going to make the corner there. So on to lap two now, and Tom's going to make a move on Owen. It's very close, it's very wheel bangy, and Tom makes the move to stick just before 130R. Brilliant move there from Tom. He's on the prime tires to note, so uh, he's going to try and go longer than everyone else. Owen tries to make a move down the inside. Doesn't really work as he has to cut back. And it uh, looks like, oh god, Owen squeezing uh, Tom's the grass time bit. Not amazing to see, but Tom's going to carry on. And it uh, looks like Tom just has it over Owen. But no, Owen's overtaken Tom on lap three through the spoon corner. And so Tom into Rich Mix, so he's going to try and stay ahead. But no, there's been contact. There's been contact. Tom and Owen have crashed. Owen's lost a bit of his front wing. I'm not sure about Tom. We'll have to look at the replay there. As we can see now, we're going towards the replay. Tom just stuck into Rich Mix. And they're nowhere near each other. And oh god, looks like... Owen swiped across and hit Tom. We can see on the... We've looked at the replays afterwards. A steward's inquiry into Owen and Tom's incident. We could see that Owen was uh, a bit close to Tom. Not that close, but there was space to give on the left-hand side. So Owen will be getting one penalty point for not giving enough room. We know this game does have some really tricky uh, side pod glitch and some very bad sensitive uh, car connectivity issues. So it's always best to give some room. So Owen will be getting one penalty point and hopefully um, he learns his lesson and next time they'll be getting... Uh, giving a lot of room. So into the pit stop phases now on lap 6. Kalish D1 is making his pit stop onto the prime tyres there and he's in 5th place now. Michel is also making his pit stop and I think Hyperdix as well and Tom Nine Cent Feinstrat has obviously on the prime tyres stayed out and he's going to gain some positions here. Just going to be a question of how those uh, worn primes go against the, uh, the against the new primes really. So on to lap 6, the next lap, Arava makes his pit stop for the prime tyres. Uh, no, he's actually going to the option sorry. So he's on the option tyres so uh, he's uh, heard the engineers obviously tell him about the rain coming. So he'll be wanting to try and stretch these tyres out until the wet period. So uh, we'll have to see if that works out for him. He's down sixth place currently after being hit off into uh, onto lap one. But there was just a lot of lag in turn one really. So uh, no penalty point to be given there. There generally was a lot of lag. We actually had to wait a couple of uh, 10 seconds before the grid actually got commenced. So there was a lot of lag there in the first few laps. But it seemed to have settled down afterwards. And Boss has made his pit stop onto lap 6 for a set of option tyres. So uh, doing the same as Arava there. Hoping for the rain to come. And so we'll have to see. And so onto lap 7. Tom's gone horribly wide on the prime tyres. Looks like he nearly lost the rear. And Minichers had overtaken him. So Minichers is already making the pit stop. And he's already overtaken Tom. So Tom's struggling with those prime tyres. Surprisingly on lap 7. Which uh, I think the 
Prime should probably go about 9 to 10 laps, maybe. So, uh, Miniches lost connection, though. That is... Wow, uh, that is horrible stuff to see. Again, Miniches disconnecting twice in a row. And it's just frustrating because all he gets is uh, half the points that he's got. So, not that many points. And we're going to lap 7 with Boss. He's gone horribly wide there. Gravel in the tyres, but Mark Moeb has got it even worse into Degna 2, and he's completely lost it there. Very easy to actually lose it there with heavy fuel loads, but yet yeah, many chairs disconnecting there. He'll be getting half points. We're on to lap 8 now with Kalish D1, trying to make a move on Tom Nanton, fine strat. He's getting the slipstream on Tom, and looks like he's going to make a, try and make a move down the inside. No, Tom locks up horribly. Cal's going to tuck in but behind, just wait for Tom to kind of lose the rears and the front, and Cal overtakes Tom for third place, and is Tom going to come in? I'm not too sure. I can't see the min minimap where it exactly he is, but uh, it looks like he stayed out, actually. So now Cal onto the back of Nat. So uh, Cal's really gained some time here on these new tyres. Slip through Nat. It's going to make a move down the inside. It's a lovely move there. A lovely diving move there for second place from Cal. So really showing why he had the pace in qualifying. And he's got the race pace to match. So he's into second place. Hyperdix currently leading the race by a long way. Uh, I think he's back to his old old self, really. In Season 1, we saw him doing a lot of Vettel-esque races, leading from the front by a fair few seconds. And it looks like now he's back to the old ways. In Round 1 and Round 2, he was struggling quite a lot with uh, very low 1 and 2 points paying positions. But now Hyperdix back to his old ways, it seems. But now, onto lap 10, Arav is going to make a move round the outside of Tom. It's a nice move. Tom has to yield, though, because look at those tyres. They're really worn. And yes, as I guess, he was going to make the pit stop for option tyres. So he has brought them out to lap 10. It just seemed like he started struggling from lap 6 onwards, which was uh, hurting Tom quite a lot there. So now he's going to make a pit stop for option tyres, I'm guessing, because... Uh, I think the forecast for rain was around lap uh, lap 15, lap 16 maybe. So Tom will want to continue going on. And uh, we're here with a pit stop with Boss, I, I think. And he's uh, checking the race director, just checking uh, who's uh, going on what tyre. And uh, Boss making another pit stop for prime tyres. So he was only able to take the options to lap 12 while pitting on lap uh, 6. So uh, six, 6 laps on the options each. Not too bad, but... Uh, it looks like uh, he hasn't, you know, exactly got what he wanted in terms of stretching out the tyres. Uh, the tyres. So onto lap 15 here. Cal's making his pits off for the intermediate tyres. It's starting to spit rain there, so we'll have to see. Arab has opted to stay out, and I think Hyperdix ahead has already made his pit stop as he's uh, quite a bit away, so we can't really catch any action with him. So uh, Cal making his pit stop on lap uh, 15, and onto lap 6. Going onto lap 16. Arab locks up, double lock up into the chicane. He has to cut across the grass, and that gives him a penalty for corner cutting. Decision, Stewart's decision at the end is going to be made after the race as we can't really tell how that will affect the race but uh, we'll have to see how that goes so now Arab are making a pit stop for the intermediate tyres lap 16 probably about time as he made that double lock up on the dry tyres so uh it's, a, it's going to be an okay pit stop for him. He's into fourth place at the moment, however. So this is going well for him. Hyperdix still leading the way by a long way. Tom 97 finds right behind him in fifth, behind Arab in fifth place. Kalish D currently in third place. And Nat 9958 in second place. And so Tom making his pit stop in uh, onto lap 16 for, I'm going to guess, the intermediate tyres as well. There we go. And so uh, Tom having to uh, make an extra pit stop, really, in, in essence. Um... Uh, no, sorry, not Tom. Uh, that was Boss, actually. Boss, as we're coming through to Boss. Boss having to make an extra pit stop, uh, basically, as he had to go option, option, hard, and then intermediate instead of uh, Araba going option, option, intermediate, and Cal going option, hard, intermediate. So it kind of shows that um, maybe, even though we thought Araba might have lost his touch on uh, tyre saving on this game, it still seems he can kind of bring out the tyres. And so on to lap 17, we've got Tom overtaking Nat there. I think that was Nat, or maybe Dragon Sniper. No, it was Dragon Sniper, actually, I'm hearing in my ear. So Dragon Sniper overtaking Tom around the outside of 130R, so uh, I think Dragon Sniper is struggling quite a bit. So Cal is making another pit stop for Intermediates on lap 21. Obviously, the Intermediates wear out quite a lot in this game. I think probably quite a bit more than in real life, but there you go. Cal makes a pit stop for the Intermediate tyres. A lap, lap on the same lap, a bit further behind, Arava makes his pit stop for the Intermediates as well, and I think Tom 97 Feinstrat is close behind him as well. We'll have to see. So another set of Intermediates. He's got Liam at Durso coming up behind him, and no, actually, Tom stayed out ahead. So Tom is out ahead Head. And uh, so we'll have to see if Tom elects to stay out. If he does, I suspect Liam Atherso and Arava will be catching him up. But now Liam Atherso right behind Arava. So it's all about Arava trying to fend off Liam Atherso for that effective third place. Because as soon as uh, Tom pits, he's gone to the wet. Tom 97 Feinstrat making a bold move there. 
onto the wet tyres, feeling it's uh, too wet for him to me. We'll have to see how that pans out for him. Onto lap 26, the second la last lap of the Grand Prix. Hyperdix leading, Kalish D1 in second, Arava fighting for his first podium in Formula PlayStation. We've got Liam Arthurso coming up behind him in the Ferrari. Liam Arthurso making a move maybe around the outside. He likes to stick behind Arava into the next last corner out of the chicane and then going on to lap 27 now. So Liam Arthurso staying behind, but we're going to come through with Boss. He's a lap behind actually, unfortunately, down in eighth place. Just not having a very good uh, time of it, having to make one extra pit stop. But Hyperdix has won the race, so congratulations to him for winning round three. Kalish D1 comes home in a brilliant second place on the podium and Arava we're going to have to see on the last lap we got Liam Arthurso right behind him so we never know he could make a move into the chicane we'll have to see uh, Arava did lock it up earlier on into the chicane so the same could happen so we'll have to see on to the last lap Hyperdix has won the race his teammate has got the race win can he make it a double McLaren podium on the podium there split by the Toros of Kalish D1 he comes through fending off Liam Arthurso Liam Arthurso getting awfully close getting a good run onto him but no Arava's going to come through for his first podium in Fallen PlayStation and top 97 fine strike comes through in a good fifth place after getting a bad poor beginning of the race so mini uh, so hyperdix has won the race in his mclaren mercedes he is back on top back to old ways he's uh we, well we've seen the hyperdix of old today from season one really dominating the race really uh, congratulations to him so Hyperdix comes through to win a former PlayStation round three in his McLaren Mercedes. Kalish D won 20 seconds back in his Toro Rosso. So Hyperdix dominating the race really, kind of the Hyperdix of old from season one. So good to see him back on top of his form. So Arava gets his first podium in former PlayStation in the second McLaren Mercedes to round out the podium. Liam Adderso narrowly misses out on third place in fourth in his Ferrari. Tom 97 finds around battling back to fifth place in his Red Bull. Nat in sixth place. Carter Joyce in seventh. Boss 996 in eighth place. Dragon Snow in ninth, Mark my Weber rounding out the points in 10th place. Mini chairs disconnecting, so he's in 11th place. He'll be getting half points. And Owen 128 DNFing after his crash with Tom and also complaining of his wheel settings not working properly after the patch. So uh, it's been an interesting race. Obviously, we had a few D DNSs, um, so we didn't have a full grid to, uh, for this race. Uh, just a lot of people busy on this one uh, evening, so hopefully uh, we get a uh, nearly full grid for round four. So Hyperdix winning the race dominating back to his old form from season one so that will be very telling for the championship really and for the constructors as well because mclaren getting a double podium and the likes of toro rosso force india red bull racing and mercedes not getting uh, amazing haul of points as uh, many chairs obviously disconnected for force india uh tom 97 fine strike only in fifth place with his teammate in eighth place and uh cal the only toro rosso in this race it should be uh, kind of interesting for the constructors as everything will be starting to shuffle around. But uh, yeah, so it's been a very good race for the McLaren boys. Let's look at the Drivers' Championship now. We can see that Tom is currently leading the Drivers' Championship with 45 points. Kalish D1 is also on 45 points, but Tom obviously has that one win currently from round two. So Tom is leading the championship. In third place is Nat with 41 points. And Minichez slips down to fourth place with 39 points. Liam Arthurso stays in 5th place with 35. Hypidix all the way up to 6th place with 27 points. Arava, his teammate, also with 27 points in 7th place. Carter Joyce in 8th place with 14 points. So all in all, we've got some uh, really interesting uh, stuff up at the top. We've obviously right now got about 5 title contenders, but also maybe 6 with Hypidix starting to creep his way up. Arava is still also very much there in 7th place, but I think Hypidix is more of a chance to kind of creep up there even more, up into maybe even 4th place at some point. We'll have to see how it goes, really. This is how the second half of the table shapes up. We've got Boss 996 in ninth place with 10 points, uh, with Owen in 10th place with uh, 10 points as well. Obviously, Boss getting a better race result today. Neo in 11th place, not turning up to round three as he couldn't make it. Little Paul at 78 in 12th place with 7 points. Snoop Markey in 13th place with 6 points, not being able to turn up as well due to work issues. In 14th place, Dragon Sniper with 5th place. Obviously, though, he is leaving the league now, so that will be replaced by ESC Racing later on. And so, now, going on to the Constructors' table, we've got Red Bull Racing currently leading the way with 55 points, but we've got McLaren Mercedes in 2nd place, all the way from 7th to 2nd with 54 points, with Hyperdix winning the race and Arava getting a 3rd place today with 54 points. Scuderia Toro also moved from 4th place to 3rd place with 53 points. Uh, Force India on the same amount of points. Obviously, they scored less today, so they're in 4th place. Mercedes down to 5th place. Ferrari in 6th. Williams, Renault in 7th place. And Marussia in 8th place. If you confuse, Caterham F1 changed to Ferrari. And Sauber changed to Marussia after the patch as they equal cars now. So that is why they're different the constructors. 
So, moving on, the next race of Full PlayStation will be round four at the Spanish Grand Prix. We thoroughly hope you've enjoyed this round coverage, round three at the Japanese Grand Prix. Give it a like if you did, comment below on what you thought. Subscribe for full coverage of Full PlayStation, all 19 rounds of this season two championship. The Spanish Grand Prix should be a stunning one. Obviously, a lot more overtaking opportunities there in Spain than in Japan, so it should be a thrilling one. I hope you guys have enjoyed this week's episode, though. I've been Arif, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until the Spanish Grand Prix next week, bye-bye.